So now we're going to do a little experiment in which we add ice to the surface of the lake. I want you to carefully observe what you see happening at the interface between this upper surface of the lake and the lower surface of the lake. So I'm slowly lowering a piece of ice into the surface of this lake. You will notice these small plumes of dye that drop beneath the surface. So what's happening there? Why are we seeing these little plumes of dye dropping beneath the surface of the lake? I'll put another piece in. Again, we notice these plumes of blue water extending down and then easing back up. The explanation for this is that the water around the ice is cooling, but it still has the dye in it. And so it's cooling and becoming more dense. And as it becomes more dense, it drops lower into the the profile of the lake until it equilibrates with the temperature around it. And so we're seeing little plumes of higher density water, but colder water, dropping beneath the surface of these icebergs, essentially. And so remember, the main thing that you're seeing there is the water in the surface cooling and dropping down into the profile of the lake. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more wind to create some mixing. But this time, I'm going to add the wind uniformly from one direction for a short period of time, just the same as if we saw wind coming from one direction on a lake across the surface of the lake for an extended period of time, and then abruptly stopping as if we had a sudden change in the weather. Notice how the surface of the water, the blue epilimnion, deepened on this side, and then it rocks back and deepens on this side of the lake. And we will see that shift again, rocking back so that the surface waters are deeper on the lake and shallower on this end of the lake. If you have been looking very, very carefully, you would have seen the surface of the water also piling up slightly on this end of the lake, but not very much. And when I take the wind away, it dampens very quickly. So this rocking motion of either the surface of the lake or the thermocline or metalimnion of the lake is known as a seiche, that's spelled S-E-I-C-H-E. -E. And that's a type of water movement, a wave-like motion in a lake that oscillates rhythmically. We'll be discussing this in the water movement section of the class. And so what we're seeing here, this 
rocking motion of the thermocline or the metalimnion is known as an internal seiche because it's inside the lake within the stratification. And the rocking motion of the lake surface is known as an external seiche or a surface seiche. One of the questions that I've asked you is which rocking motion stops soonest? The surface seiche or the internal seiche? You probably have the answer to that already just from watching this motion. The question is why? So think about it and we'll be discussing it in the discussion board and in our lecture material. I'm going to add just a little bit of ice to the lake now and provide some more wind. This would be similar to the cooling that we would expect to see as we go from midsummer toward late summer as the days get shorter and the temperatures get cooler, we would start to see the surface of the lake not warming up as much during the day and cooling off at night and the wind action causing the mixing of this upper stratum of the lake, the epilimnion. So we'll add some ice to simulate the change in temperature. Notice the density currents again. And now we'll provide a little bit more wind action. As the lake cools, the, the difference in the density between the epilimnion and the hypolimnion will become less. That means that the difference in density between the epilimnion and hypolimnion will also become less. So think about it. Would that make the lake more difficult to mix or easier to mix? So if you think about making salad dressing or mixing Kool-Aid or anything like that, obviously as the densities of the two substances or water bodies become more similar and the difference is less, it's easier to mix them. You can think about it like in terms of motor oil. A high viscosity or high density motor oil is very difficult to mix with water. Uh, the less dense it becomes, the more similar it becomes and so if you're mixing two liquids that are very similar, close to the density of water, it would be much easier to mix it than something as dense or as viscous as motor oil. So we see the same thing happening in terms of the lake. As the lake surface cools, or if there is more wind action, more power to cause the mixing, we can get greater mixing between our hypolimnion and epilimnion. You can think about it either in terms of the difference in the density of the two bodies of water or the power that you're applying to the mixing. 
even if it's hard to mix something, if you really mix it hard and apply more and more and more power, you often can mix those two liquids. And so the wind action is similar to that stirring action that you might have in mixing liquids in your kitchen. And so if we have more wind, it might cause more mixing. If the lake becomes cooler and the difference in density is less, then it also might become easier to mix and we see greater mixing. Notice what happens as we increase the mixing between the hypolimnion and the epilimnion. What happens to the depth of the bottom of the epilimnion or essentially the surface of the metalimnion? and again the thermocline being inside it. You'll notice in this lake model that that has become deeper and that's exactly what we see in lakes. As the season becomes cooler and we get more wind action causing greater mixing between the, the epilimnion and the hypolimnion, we will start to see the thermocline sink or go deeper in the lake because we're getting more effective mixing with the epilimnion. So from midsummer until late fall, we will see the thermocline getting progressively lower in our lake. So I'm going to take the measurements again for you. This will be your second graph that I would like for you to graph for this exercise. Um, so I will read off the temperatures again for you with the lake and its current. Uh, for the lake in its current stratification. So do you think that the surface of the lake is going to become warmer, the same temperature as before, or colder? Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's going to become colder. We added ice to it. But let's see if that's true. You never know in science. So right now at the water surface, the temperature is 17.9 degrees centigrade. So we'll go down one unit of depth, and the temperature is still 17.9 degrees centigrade. Two units of depth, it reads 18.0 degrees centigrade. At three units of depth, still 18 degrees centigrade. 17.7 .7 degrees centigrade at four units of depth. 17.1 degrees centigrade at five units of depth. 16.1 degrees centigrade at six units of depth. 15.5 degrees centigrade at seven units of depth, 14.4 degrees centigrade at eight units of depth, 13.8 degrees centigrade at nine units of depth, 13.5 degrees centigrade at 10 units of depth, 13.3 degrees centigrade at 11 units of depth, and 13.2 degrees centigrade at 12 units of depth. So now we're going to represent even greater cooling of the lake as we go farther into the late summer, early fall period. So as you might well imagine, I'm going to add more ice to the lake. Notice that the lake is still stratified as we continue to cool the lake.
You'll notice now several things. It takes far less wind energy to cause a deep rocking motion of the lake, this internal seiche. And so when the lake was more strongly stratified and the temperature difference was greater, uh, I could apply much more wind without causing the waters to mix as effectively. But now even the slightest wind will really cause this uh, epilimnion to shift uh, from one end of the lake to the other. Uh, but you'll notice that the lake is still stratified. So what has happened to the depth of the thermocline now that the lake has become even cooler? As you can see, the depth of the thermocline is getting deeper and deeper and deeper in the lake. This can be very confusing sometimes, this rocking motion or internal seiche can be very confusing to you when you're studying a lake. Let's imagine that there's a seiche occurring in a real lake and you're out there measuring temperature profiles and you happen to be measuring this location and you measure the, that the thermocline is at this depth, but then you come back a few hours later and you measure it again and you find that, wait a minute, the thermocline is higher. How in the world could that be? It's only been a few hours and we're seeing a big difference in the depth of the thermocline. And that's because you're observing an internal seiche in your lake that can be rocking for days. And so uh, always keep that in mind when you're measuring temperature profiles in lake, lakes. If you see uh, a change through time over a short period of time in the depth of the thermocline, you may be observing an internal seiche in that lake. So we will take one last uh, set of measurements in this lake before we add ice and cause complete mixing. So um, it's, the rocking motion has almost stabilized, so it won't confuse our measurements too much. So I will go ahead and take a series of measurements now um, as the lake becomes stabilized. So the surface of the lake, the surface of the lake is now 15.0 degrees centigrade. At one unit of depth, it is still 15.0 degrees centigrade. At two units of depth, it is 14.7 degrees centigrade. At three units of depth, it is 14.4 degrees centigrade. At four units of depth, it is now 14.1 degrees centigrade. At five units of depth, it is still 14.1 degrees centigrade. At six units of depth, it is 14.0 degrees centigrade. At seven units of depth, it is 13.8 degrees centigrade. At eight units of depth, it is now 13.7 degrees centigrade. At nine units of depth, it is 13 point degrees centigrade. At 10 units of depth, it is 13.6 degrees centigrade. At 11 units of depth, it is 13.4 degrees centigrade. And at 12 units of depth, it is 13.3 degrees centigrade. For your lab exercise, be sure to graph all three of these lake profiles and look at the change in the depth of the epilimnion, metalimnion, and hypolimnion, and the position of the thermocline. I know in your graph, try to indicate where each of those three strata occur and where the thermocline lies within that profile. Notice uh, that in our graphs, we created a temperature profile for a lake, a graph of a temperature profile for a lake, by essentially taking our normal XY graph and inverting it so that the x-axis or the depth in the lake goes from zero at the surface of the graph down deep in the lake along the left axis and the temperature is plotted across uh, the surface, what would be the surface of the lake. And so we will see a temperature profile that looks something like this in this lake. Um, one last question. Uh, for you before we go on to completely mixing this lake is 
how much work does it take to mix lakes of different temperatures? And so uh, we've given you an assignment uh, in this lab exercise to evaluate how much work it would take to mix a lake that has actually the same absolute difference in temperature between the epilimnion and the hypolimnion, but one lake is substantially warmer than a second lake. And so the epilim epilimnetic temperatures are warmer in this warmer lake, but the temperature differential between the surface and the hypolimnion is the same number of degrees centigrade. So which lake is going to take more energy to mix? So think carefully about that, and you'll also find the answer in your text. Now I'm going to add a little bit more ice to this lake that we would see in really late summer and early fall, uh, as if this lake continues to cool and the winds of the autumn period pick up and we get high winds on this lake and a cooling period with shorter day lengths and uh, cooler air temperatures and less solar radiation reaching the surface of the lake because the sun is now farther away from the lake as we go into the fall season. Again, you can see the density currents dropping through the epilimnion in this lake as the epilimnetic waters cool and those cooler, more dense waters sink into the hypolimnion. So now we will apply some wind. So now you can see that with only a slight amount of wind, as the epilimnetic waters were similar in temperature and closer, more close in density to the epilimnetic waters, that mixing became very easy with a small amount of wind. And so now we've seen a complete mixing of the lake. This is known as holomixis, or complete mixing. And when this occurs, in a lake, we, it's also referred to as turnover. Now, as you can see, the lake has mixed, but that's, and that's what we mean by turnover. Some students get the misconception that turnover means that the lake suddenly flipped upside down and that the hypolimnetic waters suddenly bounced to the surface and the epilimnetic waters went to the bottom. And that's not turnover, that's a mistake. Turnover is the complete mixing that occurs as the densities between those strata became more similar. And so now we have a lake that is completely mixed. It started out as stratified, thermally stratified, and cooled, the mixing increased, and now we have complete turnover. So a little thought exercise to relate to your readings in this course. If we have one period of mixing every year in a lake, we call that monomictic. And if we have two periods of mixing each year, we call that dimictic. So if you had a lake, say here in the Willamette Valley in Oregon, low elevation, and it's stratified in the summer, and it mixed in the winter, but it never really got cold enough to develop ice cover in what you will find in your lecture and in your text to be inverse stratification, that means there would be one period of mixing, stratification in the summer 
and then mixing from the fall through the winter into spring before the summer stratification developed again. So that would be an example of a warm monomictic lake with one period of mixing. If on the other hand, it was stratified in summer, we had turnover in the fall, but then in the winter it froze over and became inversely stratified with colder, less dense waters in the surface and warmer water close to four degrees centigrade in the hypolimnion, then it would be inversely stratified. And then when the ice cover melted off in the spring and the wind action mixed the lake, there would be a second period of turnover, therefore a dimictic lake. So you can see from this lake example how those periods of mixing help us define the type of stratification that occurs in the lake. And you can easily imagine what the implications are for the biota in the lake, for the fish, the invertebrates, the zooplankton, the water chemistry, if the surface waters are completely mixing or if the epilimnetic waters do not mix completely with the hypolimnion. So be sure to make sure that you understand the concepts of thermal stratification, how it develops, and how these patterns of stratification shift throughout the season. That will become very important when we start to discuss dissolved oxygen throughout the lake and how that changes as a result of chemical processes and biological processes. And it will be important as we discuss the distribution of fish and zooplankton and aquatic invertebrates in a lake. Thank you.